Hey, hey folks, back again. Part two of the BLF LT Lantern. Okay, the previous video we discussed on basically the top end design of the thing and why the lantern was developed. Uh, because of all the camping we do and things like that, all the factory available lanterns that you buy in stores have so many flaws and one being plastic, horrible zombie colored blue tints, lack of modes, lack of runtime, too big, just, you know, a host of problems of firing LEDs, so on like that. So this is designed to eliminate all those problems and bring the best of both worlds into a lantern that we can use and can fit into a hoodie pocket and have sustainability using 18650s because the, one, the few 18650 small lanterns that we have available, um, like the Blitzwolf LT, which is no longer available actually, and the Fenix uh, version, things like that, they're, they have, they still have flaws, usually tint, some are good, but they have some other flaws, usually a lot of it is fact, they're still made of plastic, um, they run one cell, they have, you know, lack of runtime, lack of modes that we could use, and a durability, and, you know, being something that the, you could sit in on a table in a power edge or in a cottage somewhere, you know, for a week, and illuminate the entire cottage with enough output, and run time to run for a whole weekend on a single charge. So yeah, so back to going to the midsection from the last video we stopped at the charger point so now we're talking about the actual switch the original blf q8 has a green switch this one still does i haven't had a chance to actually change the leds inside that yet uh, one suggestion we could do here is change this to like an amber or a yellow leds instead of the green because then when it's completely dark it's a uh, it's a night light it's like your firefly low low mode even though the lantern can still have a uh, I don't know if you can zoom in and see the actual LEDs on here. Uh, yeah, there they are. The four LEDs in there um, on low mode. So yeah, you can still have the switch as a night light itself with amber, so it's that way. And plus, when you're looking for the lantern in a tent, you can actually see it. But amber and yellow has a better effect on the uh, the sleep thing. I was I can't remember what it was called anyhow, but it's much better to have it yellow. So it should be no problem changing that. Um, let me get back to the actual focus. There we go. So yeah, so that we change. We're looking at the charging port, which probably should be 45 degrees or 90 degrees. My mistake, 45 degrees right here, 90 degrees, or it could even be 120 degrees around the back, because the original Q8 has a tripod hole on the back. We wouldn't really need that on the lantern here, so this could be the charging port, uh, power bank port on the back end. Uh, again, depending on what Barry decides with the developers, it could be 180 degrees or it could be 90 degrees, depending on what you want to do there. Uh, in the place of this one, I'm going to go right to the bottom end, uh, is place the tripod hole in the center. I modified this cap with extra aluminum inside, so I put a quarter inch, 20 thread per inch uh, tripod mount on the bottom. So you mount this on top of a tripod, so when you get a campground, you can set it three or four feet off the ground, and it lights up an entire area on high mode. Which is a great idea of, of having the tripod. Somebody did mention in the group actually, and then we went with that. So that'd be something that would be incorporated in the lantern, which would be a great benefit. Uh, okay, and the driver basically, it's something that was developed by DEL uh, a while ago in the forum, but he somehow went missing in action. I don't know what happened to him. Uh, same with the Miller, they both sort of disappeared. I wish they would come back because he had a think, good thing going when he designed the driver, which is posted in the original post of the BLF topic on the lantern. But the, hopefully we got someone else working on it right now. And Toy Keeper is working on the firmware, which is going to add uh, modes, including like the candle mode, sunset mode, which are great modes to have. Uh, but it's nice features to have actual modes. Ramping, tint ramping, which will ramp anywhere from 5K down to 3K or 27K, which that way will cover the entire spectrum of what people like. You could have it on 5K on maximum mode for leveling out outdoors and the warm ones for if you're reading a book or sitting inside because... Uh, people like different tints so this would cover an entire tint range of by having the tint wrapping um, going back to that if you remember the actual picture I posted of the MC PCB for the lights for the LEDs I meant to say it has eight LEDs two outside of each other all the way around uh, with two channels so one for the 3k the other for a 5k so that way it can be controlled with the, uh, the master switch in there so yeah again this thing is based off the Q8 light itself but uh, with the top actually removed and modified uh, in this case I removed both, both, sorry about that I modified the actual driver uh, to run as a lantern but again the new driver is going to be developed with a charging circuit hopefully and using toy keeper firmware to uh, add a few modes and change it more suitable for a lantern 
So as for the body section, we did mention in the last video of removing lower fans, creating knurling here so that you know you can still physically lock out the lantern by turning the uh, small turn. That way it doesn't come on. So you still have the physical lockout. This would be easier to grip than like that. Plus, it, you don't need these fins here no more because no longer supporting an actual LED board on here for heat dissipation. It's up here. And the lantern, again, is not going to be driven as hard as what the actual uh, Q8 is driven because it's designed to run continuously for long hours at a time. Whereas, you know, you're not going to be running this on its maximum mode for more than a few minutes. You know, after like 10 minutes, this gets really, really hot, I find. Whereas the plus the runtime is not going to be there to do that. Uh, the run is on, on the same average of what the Q8 is being done. Because what we're looking at here is to gain runtime with a good balance of output. So with uh, roughly one and a half amp, I removed the FET from the driver for testing and put four 7135 regulators on there. And that's roughly around the 1.4 amp range. And its output the camera can't really see it because it has it cuts back the um, the light so it's easily equivalent to a 40 watt or a 9 watt led you know bulb that's a household bulb is in your light socket so and it'll run for like 15 hours on that mode 14 hours with a good set of 30 3500 amp hour cells so it's a uh, it's a good balance of run times that means you could get a full weekend out of a single charge and a lantern that right now is the same brightness as my brightest one which is that one right here um, but that one there uses a D cells and only runs for six and a half hours seven hours maximum so there's there's a big difference in that then you gotta buy more cells for that and again it's a size difference if this thing is a fraction of the size of the uh, the big one uh, disregard that one has remote control but it's, it's kind of a gimmick but it's neat uh, but uh, so that's yeah it's a balance of runtime and uh, output is what we're looking at here in a lantern that'll actually fit in your pocket in a hoodie that's brighter than most all the smaller ones that I, I've seen even the good better ones like this one which I like this one because since I modified it and uh, I even built you know other ones like this little telescopy one here that's actually a flashlight but it's also put and I changed the LED actually to a, a higher CRI version of that it has three modes change the driver it runs on a single 650 but it only has a one a 170 170 135 chip in it uh, so it can get like roughly five hours six hours runtime on high but again it's not nearly the light output of what this thing is because this is like probably four times the output and more at the runtime because it runs eight four cells i'm sorry instead of the one so it's basically um, the advantage of you know not making it too small but in the size of that and you can carry it in your pocket if you had to you know you can hang it by the lanyard it's palm size, but it has the output of the bigger ones that you see in the factories that cost. You know, like this one was a hundred dollars. This one was like seventy dollars. Uh, the Defiant was on sale for like forty, but I still modified all these because they had either bad tinted LEDs or their LEDs were shining up from the bottom, or you know they just had run on D cell or C cell alkaline batteries. I modified them all, by the way, to run on um, 18650s with different drivers so that you know you can recharge the actual batteries this one here I actually install the charger onto it a tp4056 so i can recharge the thing but as for a hundred dollar life in the factory it's not even close to what this would be even if this was a hundred dollars but we're hoping to try to keep the cost of this thing down to something in a good range like 50 60 dollars well depending on what barry and the, the engineers decide uh, i think it's really working with sulfur right now in, in china to uh, to get the um, design great market for this so basically yeah that explains mostly what all the features of this thing uh, again like the q8 it runs in parallel and the advantage of that because the lantern does not draw so much amps as what the q8 does it can run on one cell two cells three cells or four cells the only thing you're going to difference is the lack of runtime with one cell so you can throw any 18650s in there and any number of them i should say up to four and still run that way uh, so yeah, so we basically went through all the features of what this was designed for, uh, how it was designed, the solid heat sink on the top, the eight LEDs on top, which are basically patterned one behind each other so that the light is more even because as if you look closely enough again, let me turn this on low and try to focus on that. Yeah, so no matter what direction the lantern is facing, there's at least three LEDs always visible regardless of the center pole, so the light beam around it is always smooth. So by placing 
the LEDs, say the 5K and the 3K, behind each other, as the tint ramps, it doesn't change the pattern, it just changes the tint instead of putting side by side. So that's the advantage of how I designed the board. If you look back on the forum, you see that it's done that way. Uh, back to focus again, look, bad camera. But yeah, so that's basically the idea of doing that. The tint running feature, I really like the idea that, uh, like I said, this is a project thing that I started, but it's taken a team effort to build. So we have a small team right now working on this. Uh, Toy Keeper is doing an awesome firmware thing. We have Barry working with software in the factory and the engineers to design it. Uh, we had Dell and the Miller, but they sort of went missing, which we don't know how many. We have SB Slider, uh, Blue Sword, and BM Engineer, there's others, something like that. The more we can get involved in this thing, and the more we push out, the more we can be, be, this can become a reality. Uh, it's something like, um, we have close to 900 uh, interested people on the forum right now. Uh, and that's just what's on the forum, and I've already spoke to some scouts groups, and they would buy dozens more of these things because of the fact that it's a great lantern that has something that all the factory lanterns lack. That's the thing I've seen. I've tried them all. I had, I've got hundreds of them that I've modified. This was probably one of the better, smaller, cheaper, sustainable ones. The Ivation one I had that collapses into a little light like this. I like it. Again, it's I had to modify it. It just the factory thing just did not work. I had to change first of all the LED. It was a horrible 7K zombie colored blue tint like the most we see come come with. It has a solar panel on the, on the top, but it's very tiny. Uh, it's also a power bank output, but it has a tiny 14500 uh, single sound to it, so it doesn't want to really charge your phone. A small phone you shut off, it'll give you about 5% extra charge, that's about it. Um, it can charge input, but again, on its maximum mode, it's dim in relation to what this can do. Like, the camera can't see it, but I, like right now, this I can't even see this being on right now compared to what this does. So yeah. And this was like I think it was like twenty bucks or twenty five dollars or something like that. But again, it's, it's it is what it is, right? It's plastic, it's cheap, and you know I've got a bunch of these that I've modified. This one has a flashlight in the end. Again, it's plastic. I've removed the up firing LEDs, which again, like they cost too much glare when you're sitting on the table. I removed put the LED on the top. There it is, right there, facing down to them like that. Um, it's just everything had to be modified. The Defiant, I changed all these. Warm weight. Two comas I modified all the ones on the shelf over here. You probably can't see them because they're here. They are. There's a bunch of another Defiant. There's some other brand new lenders. You know these cost me average between forty, fifty, sixty dollars. Um, and they all again, they all had to be modified to uh, to improve what the factories were lacking: LED tint, run times, type of batteries, rechargeability, modes. Um, the direction of the LEDs, the chrome being replaced on a lot of these, I'm going to paint over with the, uh, the matte white, which works so much better uh, for cut for eliminating glare. So, like basically, in the case of these, uh, both of these are done with the same way, by the way, with the uh, the flat white. So, like as for like uh, the eliminating glare thing, you can look at these straight on the side on. They have no more glare on any angle when you look at these things versus. Whereas the other ones, there's a lot of sharp, hard, hard, hard line glare from the LEDs because the other have um, chrome on the bottom. It's a clear lens. The LEDs are you know, exposed, like the Defiant here, for instance. Um, even though I swapped the LEDs, they're all exposed. There you go, all the way around. So this thing pulls roughly an amp and a half, two amps, which is still not as bright as that. You can't really see it on the camera. And it, it's got some real glare because all this chrome, it creates a hard light so it's, it's just not as pleasing to the eyes as what these are and uh, even after I modified it's it's better but it's not as good as what this is so basically what we're looking at here is to uh, create something that uh, eliminates all the bad things that from the factory LEDs that we buy in stores that they, that they do not have and lack like even this with this fully frosted uh, diffuser for Q8 there we go. Uh, works great, but the problem with that, there's like literally no downlight. It doesn't illuminate the table at all. And when you're standing above it, it has glare. Like, great for indoors, you can pull that off and use a light like this for a ceiling bounce. And I'm sitting in my RV trailer right now, which has a white ceiling, so it's great. But when you're outdoors, it's useless that way. You can't bounce light off the sky. It doesn't work. And with a diffuser, it works better, but 
it for some reason it still it just does not do what lander does because lander has the top that blocks the eye glare and when it's hanging up it's up high you don't get the same glare the same way and it shines the light out in the direction and more down where you would actually need it plus it's the run time it's the fact that with the lens this is so much shorter than what the uh, q8 is with a diffuser so diffusers has an advantage to for some reason for some things but for lantern use it's it's pretty much limited you can run on a lower mode and uh, things like that but it's just that it doesn't do what a, what a dedicated lantern would do plus having the chargeable power bank we recharge the system in there and uh, the power bank option would be great in a lantern having the tripod hole in the bottom for uh, actual tripods or mounting things like that it uh, has some advantages so yeah so that's basically designed basically what this is uh, all about the blf lt lantern is the ultimate lantern that has all the problems that the factory lanterns you get, even the more expensive ones, are lacking in, will have this. One more thing we could add to this, uh, I'm probably going to do a video eventually on uh, talking about accessories we could do with this. One of the accessories that I have is this case. Uh, basically, it's an old GPS case, but it has padding on the inside, and it's really great. It has a belt clip. I put a lantern on it, and the lantern fits in this thing perfectly. Basically, this is something that could be done by the manufacturer, so that way it protects the thing from being scratched, it's stored, you know, it's soft. You can still put it in your pocket, you can put it on your you know, hip belt, things like that. So this would be a great thing to have with the lantern, if possible, uh, as an accessory. But the, also, somebody mentioned before, I can't remember the exact name, they were talking about an actual reflector, which we could, if we want to leave the actual tripod on the back, we could do that. Place the charger 45 degrees or 90 degrees from the switch, leave the tripod hole, and have a flat white reflector which I'm probably going to make for this eventually for a test and then we could have an accessory kit for this the reflector would actually be like a half circle thing facing around behind it with thread in here with like a uh, little wing nut thing and basically direct light in one direction of uh, view from the lantern so it's not reflecting from behind so you can have it facing away from you if you're trying to illuminate an area you can right here so we could have a reflector as an accessory kit uh, Charging cords, adapter for charging for accessory kit, the, the case, uh, even the tripod stand. There's other things, things like that. And lanyards like Evergares, depending on the manufacturer, what they do, you could go with the lanyard. Uh, what I did is I use this, you know, particular clip, which is one of the better ones. We use it has a hook on the top that opens up on the end lanyard, so it means you can connect it to a wire or a cable or a ring bolt or something like that and hang the lantern straight up. It's just those little things that factory lanterns lack and a lot of factory lanterns if you notice they always have a rigid handle which it's okay for carrying but they're not good for hanging on anything and it's just an extra thing that gets in the way it's much better to have like a paraboard softer type lantern because that way you know you can tuck it down out of the way it fits in the bag better and you can hang out you know a host of things like a doorknob or like a larger tree branch or so on like that or you could just remove it if you don't want to use it but yeah anyhow that's the lantern this is what it is, the BLF LT Lantern. We're hoping to get into production. It's been overdue now for quite a long time. And hopefully we can get the developers going at this and get this pushed into a reality because I think this will be a very successful another BLF project. Goodbye, everybody.